So I'm here in the forest of Babiar on the outskirts of Kiev. Uh, it's a very heavy feeling here. Um, at the pretty much very close to the beginning of the war, the 29th and 30th of September 1941, was the largest execution, mass murder of Jews known in the Holocaust. 33,771 Jews were brought here to this forest, to a ravine just as we see behind us over here, were forced to stand with their faces towards the bottom and shot and murdered into these pits. This is a very heavy and difficult place. It's a place that really a lot of us grew up hearing about Babi Yar, about this place of just utter destruction and, and horrors. And after that mass execution of Jews in the November, in September, sorry, there carried on being uh, an unfortunate mass amount of executions. Here in Babi Yar, over 150,000 people were killed during the Holocaust. Over 100,000 Jews and many others as well. Romas, mentally disabled people from local hospitals. And really this is a very symbolic and important site in terms of commemorating and understanding. Uh, and I'm here today uh, as a guest of the Babi Yar Holocaust Memorial Foundation that was set up to deal with this site to deal with telling the stories of this place and are making sure that this message isn't forgotten. Uh, and truly, it's, it's, it's actually difficult to describe, you know. In my line of work, I visit a lot of German Nazi concentration camps and I see a lot of these places. However, none of them feel as heavy and as brutal as this place does. There's something very deep and distressing about the fact that the German Nazis would bring tens of thousands over a hundred thousand Jews here, often with the help of the Ukrainian collaborators, and just make them strip, just literally where I am, just behind me, and stand in the exact spot I'm standing in, 70, over 70 years ago, and shot into this pit behind us. And I think that when we're dealing with this commemoration, it's so important for our generation to start getting involved, and way more than we are. You know, it's easy to sit and to watch this on your computer and your iPhone, wherever you are around the world. But it's also truly our responsibility to get involved in this subject, to tell these stories. Recently, I was invited to Chicago. And in Chicago, I met with dozens of Ukrainian Holocaust survivors. And we did the Torah project there, where people fill in the missing letters from the Torah. And each survivor that comes up, I give them the opportunity to ask them if they want to write this letter in memory of someone from their family. And dealing with survivors all around the world, most tend to be English-speaking survivors, survivors from Poland and Germany, wherever they may be. But to have this group of Russian-speaking Ukrainian survivors was truly remarkable. The first person who came up and said, I'd like to remember my mother my father, my grandparents, my cousins, my brothers and sisters who were murdered in Babi Yar just took the breath out. Entire families wiped out with this site. But then over and over again, these Ukrainian Jewish Holocaust survivors living today in Chicago, one after another, came up and all spoke about this site, spoke about this place as a level of memorial for them. And I think that this is such a crucial part of what we can do as the last generation that has this opportunity to speak to these survivors, we have to get out. We have to hear their stories, but we have to take ownership of them because sadly this generation will no longer be with us in a very short period of time. And this is when it's our job to become the witnesses of the witnesses. So from here in Babi Yar, one of the most depressing and difficult places, standing on the edge of a pit where potentially tens of thousands of Jews, 33,000 Jews were just shot and dumped in this place behind me. I stand here so many years later as a very